So welcome to our Wallawa Lake 2018 camping trip. It is 7.05 in the morning and I'm out taking an early video. People are starting to stir. This is the historic Wallawa Lake Lodge. You can stay there for a lot of money a night. We choose not to. Coming this way is the road into the park. You can see over there there's a place where you can rent bumper boats. Let me zoom in a little bit. Bumper boats. They have a little general store restaurant here. Up that way is where the gondola is that takes you up to the top of Mount Howard. I'll get a picture of that after a bit. And more shops, uh, hiking trails, that kind of stuff. Here is the bumper boat ride. Good for the fun for the kiddies. Um, we have a deck and over here for the little restaurant, pizza place. You can get pizza, you can get ice cream, that kind of stuff. This is the bridge coming into the park. You can see the park sign over there. Um, the Wallawa River. A pan out here. Comes down out of the mountains over there. You can hear the river rushing. I'll come over here to the other side. This river flows off out of the mountains into Wallawa Lake. You can see the water is really crystal clear. I know guys do fish this. I never have to cost a lot of money to get an out-of-state license. Anyway, it flows down that way. Over here is the welcome sign. Welcome to Wallawa Lake. Entrance to the park. Pretty cheap to stay here for five nights. It cost me uh, $158 for a full hookup. Not too bad. And over here you can see some of the mountains from the other side. There's a, some kind of a church camp out that way and some other cabins you can rent, that kind of stuff. Down this way, I'm going to try and ride on my bike doing this, is uh, one of the day use areas. You can get to the river and part of the lake. Sorry, it's a little bouncy. I'm doing this on my cell phone. It's because I have not yet purchased a GoPro. So it is on my wish list, but sometime. Excuse the dumpster. I didn't put it there. Part of the lake there. Bathrooms there. There's a trail that goes over there to the Forza Marina. Picnic areas. Of course, the local wildlife, you didn't know if you saw a chipmunk on there. This is all the day use area. Picnic tables. It's a nice place to come if you live close by, but. For us, it's an eight-hour drive. Not gonna, that's not gonna happen for a day. So that is Mount Howard. The park itself is situated at right around 4,000 feet. You can see the the gondola going up that little green trail there. It's about a 15-minute gondola ride up to the top which puts you at a little over 8,100 feet, gives you the view of the lake, the town, the surrounding area, over into Hell's Canyon area, mountains, and the Wallawas. Costs about 30 bucks for an adult to go up there, but you can spend the whole day hiking, or they have a restaurant up there, or you can just kick back and relax, take in the sights, don't feed the wildlife, that kind of stuff. 
Here is more of the day use area. You can see the picnic shelter over there. You can day use only open from 7 to 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. I'm not sure what kind of pass you have to have. I'm sure that's available on their website. You can see the lake over there. Uh, more parking. It's a nice park. We like it. This is the road coming down to the lake. It's, uh, sorry about that. See the park personnel are already out doing their more early morning chores. Anyway, this opens up into Wallawa Lake, the swim area down there. It was pretty crowded yesterday because it was warm. Temps up in the lower 90s, but it wasn't too bad, you know, because there was a breeze blowing. I mean, this gives you a view of Wallawa Lake. Coming around over here towards the marina. You can bring your boat and park it if you're camping or just come out for the day. Let me zoom this out. So you got to view the, the swim area over here. Savannah, two years ago, actually swam out there when I was playing. She was a popsicle when she came out. Little store. Where you can buy ice or goodies or get information, buy a fishing license. Get in the marina over here. Off around behind me. The mountains surrounding the park. They probably go to about 8,000 feet, and then uh, you could, there's actually trails to go up there. My nephew, Orion, runs out there, but he's kind of crazy. He's one of those crazy runners. You'll have to excuse the bumpiness of this. I'm doing this one-handed while I'm riding my bike. And then come down here during the day and uh, it's a, some of the local wildlife. It looks like it's a little limp. Got a little gimp in his step there. Oops, almost fell off my bike. Sorry guys, I didn't mean to wake you up. So this is Hulawa Lake from the east, no, yeah, at the east end of the lake, far end of the lake. Sun's coming up over here on my right, so that's got to be east, right? The marina. There's fishing in here, kokanee, trout, uh, I'm not sure what else. The river comes in over there. Really good fishing right off of there. We've done well in the past. Come back around. It's pretty quiet early in the morning. I grabbed a 5.30 shower and one of those early morning almost to be 28 year olds. So I'm about about early. You can also rent kayaks here. Take them out on the lake. Boat ramp over there. In the a week ago, they were setting up fireworks over there in the middle of the lake for the Fourth of July celebration. And we've been here for that. It's really cool. The um, explosion echoes through the canyon behind me, and then come back around here. A little store where you can get ice and, like I said, anything. We come down here to get ice cream, that kind of stuff. Here's another view of Mount Howard up behind us where the tram goes up there. It's kind of hard with the sun coming in like that. I don't know if I can block it out. But anyway, that's where we're going to go either today or Wednesday. It's not too hot because there's no shade up there.
pretty cool now people are doing or parks and lakes and stuff are doing you can borrow a life jacket if you forgot yours or don't have one they just ask that you return it and, uh, grandpa bike there's another view of the marina office over there coming around I'm going to show you the boat ramp for those of you that have boats it is a very nice ramp I think it's two lanes put in, one lane take out, or something. No, one. It looks like one of each. But um, very nice concrete ramp. The only thing, like any other place, you got to watch out for is sometimes the wind does blow. I know a few years ago, my brother-in-law Daniel's boat came untied over there at the docks and was drifting out in the lake, and some nice. Good Samaritans towed it back and tied it up. And when he came down to get his boat, he goes, Hey, where's my boat? <laughs> and you can see somebody taking off there. And this is the boat. This boat at one time actually belonged to my brother Angel, my older brother. It's a 17 foot Boston whaler with a center console. 150 Merc on the back. I have many memories in this boat from fishing out on the sound with him. Let me tell you, this is not a boat for the meek because there is no cover. If it's raining, you're going to get wet. If it's windy, you're going to get blown. It, uh, if you've ever been out with my brother Angel, he does not pussyfoot around. He is got the throttle all the way down and if there's waves you're not going to go around them you're not going to go over them you're going to go through them it's a kidney pounder for sure but anyway we've got many many fish off of this boat many many crab it's a good little boat my brother-in-law my brother-in-laws Jesse and Daniel ended up buying it from him to use down here on the Columbia for fishing I don't know that they've ever have but it's a good little boat for that very seaworthy I mean we've had it in you know, three, three and a half, four foot swells, and it handles very, very well, which speaks highly for Boston Whaler. And like with most state parks that I've been in, there you can't get lost. There's signs everywhere to tell you where you're at. As I said, around the the park, there's and up out of the park, there's all kinds of little trails you can take. This one actually goes up that way, and then back out that way. And I think then it heads up somewhere up the hill. But also there's a lake over at that end at the end of that road where that car is way over there. That goes around the, would be the west side of the lake. Uh, we've done part of it. Done some geocaching out there. It's kind of fun. Fish cleaning station down here at the marina. Where you can clean your catch. They do this so that you don't have to do it in camp. So you're not leaving fish guts and that kind of stuff for the, to attract bears and things. Um, most marinas on, that I've been to have these. Um, stainless steel, water hoses. The guts go down there. Filet board so you can flay them out if you want. And uh, information boards, that kind of stuff. Pretty nice. Yeah, my friend Joey was a uh, the uh, star of the day when last time. Well, we were here about seven, eight years ago. I can't remember. Anyway, because she caught about a 22-inch rainbow out on the lake, which is huge for a rainbow for this lake, and it kind of drew a crowd. She was like beaming. Good for her. So this is one of the little interpretive sites that they have to uh, give a history of the local Nez Perce Indian tribe one of their traditional teepees as many of you may know this was the home of the tribe the band of Indians led by Chief Joseph the town up to the other end of the lake named after him the they give an interpretive talk here you can see the poles used to hold the teepee up. And then the inside. Let's see if I can 
get a shot in here. Here, here we go. They're pretty roomy. I kind of like my air mattress myself. And then the hole in the top to let the smoke out. But anyway, they give a talk every night. The Ranger Information Center. They give little talks here and you can get info on hiking trails, that kind of stuff. Two years ago they had a bear hide. Apparently there was a bear that was getting into people's campgrounds. They finally had to put it down. And though they donated the meat and then kept the hide for uh, give talks on about the wildlife, why you shouldn't uh, leave your food out at camp. This is what happens, that kind of stuff. This is the entrance to the park. Registration, pull up, fill out the information, get your site, blah, 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 go yo. The nice thing about this, it was a pleasant surprise, was I asked, I said, where do you get tokens for the showers? And uh, the lady looked at me, she goes, if you're registered, you can take all the showers you want for free. Not so in Washington State, because in Washington, the first thing they tell you is, the token machines are there, over there, cost you five bucks for six, you get three minutes per token. Which, when you have a teenager, showers can get expensive. So anyway, this is the entrance. I'll show you some of the campgrounds here in a little bit. This is the uh, firewood sales booth. They can, if you don't bring in your own, you can buy it here. I think it's like five dollars for a little wheelbarrow. Could last you a couple of nights if you don't go crazy. Pretty reasonable. The nice thing is that it's dry. Not much smoke. This also gives you a pretty good idea of what the campsites are like. Uh, these are all tent. This is all the tent area. You can see they're all dispersed through the trees. Um, over here we have some motorhomes. These motorhomes and trailer sites are nice because, like, my brother Art has a 35 footer and it fits with no problem. You can keep one vehicle. Well, you get the tow vehicle, gets to stay there. And additional vehicles are $8 a night. And if you don't, if you can fit both vehicles or, or two vehicles on the pad without going off the pad, the concrete pad, they can both stay at the site. Otherwise, the second vehicle has to stay down by the marina along the overflow parking. So this is Loop C, which is where we're staying. As you can see, people are starting to rise and shine. You can see the some of the sites. Some of them are pulled through, like this one. Some are back in. But they're all very, very nice. Hey. hey. You guys aren't supposed to be up yet. With my daughter Alice and my sister Gloria. Over here are the bathrooms. These ones are really nice. Um, bathrooms and showers. Oh. One guy can run right in front of me. So you can see some of these sites fit some pretty big motorhomes. And then uh, here's the bathrooms there. Fall off my bike. Showers there. Showers are free. So are the bathrooms. So down here is the horseshoe pits. Every year we always have a big horseshoe tournament. My friend Joey and I won the first year we came. Um, over there the kids playground. Always busy. You can see more campsites over there, sort of. Um, lots of deer around. I think we saw three yesterday. They're very, I don't want to say tame, but they're not afraid of you unless you get really close. And they do bite and they do kick. So they tell you to leave them alone. This will give you an idea of the variety of trailers you'll find here. This is my brother-in-law Jesse's truck. This is his trailer, brand new, maiden voyage. He and his wife Bev. 
staying here. I think he said this was a 30, 31, 32, 33. It's a little bit smaller than Arts. But these are the sites. Each one has its own table and a fire pit. Room for tents. You can keep one tent per site. So the one site is a maximum of eight people. So this is this is my sister Gloria and brother-in-law Daniel's place, their motorhome. A little smaller. They had a little bit of fun. Say hi, Mexicans. <laughs> they uh, had a blowout on the way just before we got to La Grande, and did some damage to the underside of it. So wiring that kind of stuff. Over here is us. That's the tow rig. Chase car. The boy. Say hi, boy. Well, he doesn't like his picture taken. Anyway, this is our trailer, or the tent trailer. I call it Casa Lane, because I never get to sleep in there. I get booted. Um, our campsite. We moved the picnic table over around the back. I'll show you here in a minute. The fire pit over here. We'll have to buy some wood today. Over here in the back 40 is Casa Cortez. This is where I stayed in my backpacking tent. Savannah, can you come around and open the, the thing? This is Savannah. Say hi, Savannah. She thinks she's hot stuff since she got taller than me. Anyway, this is my abode. I got just enough room for a twin air mattress, sleeping bag, and a place to move around to get dressed in the morning. It's got a loft where I can dry my towel, my bath towel. Okay, you can close it back up. And then over here is the kitchen dining area. We moved the tables together from these two sites. Stoves are over there. I'm going to bring mine out here in a bit. And this is where Gloria's son Scott and his family are going to be staying when they get here on Wednesday. So anyway, that's Wallawa Lake State Park, our, half of our, our part of it anyway. Hope you enjoyed the tour. Talk to y'all later.